Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We often hear Tesla are five years ahead. Some people say three and some even say as far as 10. But what do we mean by ahead? And why does it take so long to catch up with Tesla? We hear people call Tesla a tech company, along with other various labels, like an energy company that happens to sell cars. But tech is what Tesla are competing in. Tesla's technology on how to get so much more range and performance from a battery is second to none. Actually, not even a close second to anyone. Their lead is that much further ahead on performance and range. Why is that? Well, this is part of the tech that Tesla has to its advantage. For example, 2170 batteries are available to other manufacturers. Rivian was smart enough to choose them in their vehicles. I'm actually not aware of any other auto company using 2170s other than Rivian though. And I don't understand why none of the others do either. But anyway, 2170s are available to other manufacturers. So why don't they use this battery form and then create similar performance as Tesla? You'd think that if Porsche are going to charge about twice as much for a similar car, then they can justify the expense of moving to 2170 battery form. But my point is that even if they did, like even as Rivian did, they still can't get the same performance and range from the identical batteries. This is mainly due to the technology in the software, drivetrain and motor that Tesla used to convert energy from the battery into making the car go. This is a technology Tesla seems to be years ahead on. Still, no other auto company is able to get the same range or performance out of a similar sized battery. What is incredibly impressive though, is that how Tesla have some incredible way of not only producing cars with good range, but also exceptional acceleration and power. It seems clear that any manufacturer that attempts at getting a decent range clearly sacrifices performance as a result. For example, the new Mercedes EQS probably gets around 400 miles EPA, which is a really good range. I mean, it's completely moot because the car is so expensive that no one can afford it, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. No, the Mercedes only goes zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. This is not a great time. Tesla's Plaid will do it under two seconds. That's less than half the time. Of course, the Plaid has similar range too. And of course, the equivalent Mercedes is nearly twice the price. That was Mercedes' best effort at getting a decent range, which is more what you'd expect of a luxury car. Compared to a Porsche, you would more likely expect performance. Therefore, the Porsche Taycan did the opposite. It so badly wanted to match Tesla in performance. And they just about achieved it. At the time, of course. Obviously now it's no match for the Plaid, but the cost was that they sacrificed, well, aside from the actual cost, what with it being about twice the price as well, was that the range was only 200 miles. So just to summarize, the Mercedes is nearly twice the price, has a similar range as Tesla, but takes twice as long to arrive at 60 miles an hour. The Porsche, which is nearly twice the price, had a similar zero to 60 time as the old Tesla performance in ludicrous mode, but had half the range. Except these were cars that the best German auto engineers in the world were working on, trying to catch up with last year's Tesla technology and coming in at absurdly high price points. It took them years to deliver and they came up very short, except now Tesla is about to launch their new versions, which absolutely further obliterate the competition. But you won't hear that in the auto reviews. They will tell you how amazing it is that Mercedes has so many large screens in the cabin. That's where the real engineering genius lies. None of this long range, higher performance stuff at an affordable price. No, this is real luxury, Mercedes luxury, like massaging seats. And the Porsche reviews will tell you how important it is to be able to do 10 drag races in a row without losing about 0.2 seconds on your zero to 60 time, because that's what people look for when buying an EV. Again, none of this equal performance with twice the range at half the cost stuff. That's only a minor element when you review an EV. And perhaps that's it. I don't do car reviews, I do EV reviews. It's more about tech than features. Okay, so it appear that Tesla are years ahead on that side of the technology. Well, they are on battery side too. Now, as I was saying, Rivian are using 2170 batteries. So they have officially caught up to Tesla on the battery technology that Tesla were using four years ago. Well, that's when the cars were actually selling. Rivians aren't quite out yet. Either way, Rivian is possibly the closest with battery technology because they copied what Tesla were doing years ago. But that's the problem, isn't it? If you're playing catch up, 
and it takes you that long to catch up. By the time you have caught up, well, it's only good if the competition is standing still. Unfortunately for Rivian, Tesla are not standing still. They're moving about as fast as a rocket-powered roadster. So yeah, Rivian may have caught up, but they aren't even selling yet, and Tesla are about to move over to the 4680 batteries. Except these ones are a bit more special, and maybe a lot longer time before any competition get their hands on anything equivalent, let alone set up production facility and then design cars around them and then get those cars into production. So yeah, there must be another five years or so Tesla are ahead with batteries. But these are just components and software of the car. What about the actual product itself? You know, I'm actually not sure the legacy auto companies quite realize. If not, they're being particularly coy about it otherwise. Tesla is not an EV. It's a digital smart car. Over the year updates were such a big thing with Teslas that eventually the legacy companies started incorporating them too. But theirs are only skin deep. But enough to let them say the words over the year update as if it means exactly the same as Tesla. That's just marketing. You see, Tesla's over-the-air updates update the entire car. It can update the brakes, the cameras. It can even affect the performance and range of the car, which is mind-blowing. A Ford OTA might just mean you get a new update on the firmware. Perhaps it updates the maps and some bug fixes. Nothing revolutionary your car will now be able to do, like drop you off at the shops and go and park itself. It's like a smartphone versus a flip phone, except now the flip phone has an LCD screen. I have no idea how many years ahead Tesla are on this. I assume the 2012 Model S even had more digital computer control than the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Therefore, at least nine years ahead and counting. Tesla also seem to be leading the way in auto manufacturing. No one seems to be making die-cast molds for their cars using gigapresses. No one else is using structural battery packs. No one else has the octo valve, and no other auto company designed their own heat pump. And I'm sure there are plenty of other advances they've made in manufacturing also. The ability Tesla has to disrupt their own processes so quickly to change for a better, cheaper, faster, more efficient process, it is continually evolving. I don't know how far ahead Tesla are of this, but we certainly see no signs of any of the legacy autos catching up with them. In fact, that is one of the major problems legacy autos have, is that it just takes so long for them to make any changes. By the time they are implemented, they're pretty much already antiquated. So there are several areas where Tesla's technology is clearly five years ahead of the legacy autos, and likely most of the other EV manufacturers too. Five years is an incredibly long time in technology. But this is a strange industry, as the product requires so much manufacturing. It is technology moving at a much slower pace. I mean, just look how much the iPhone has improved in just four years, compared to the Model 3, almost the same car then as it is now. The fact the auto industry moves at such a slower pace means it's that much harder to catch up, relative to an industry like smartphones. The manufacturing is a lot more simple for a phone. Even if there was a Tesla killer prototype announced now, it would still take it five years to get to where Tesla are today. This is a serious lead. It's also a massive capital expense to try and catch up with Tesla only in five years time to discover, you're not close to where Tesla are then. But in reality, it doesn't matter so much for legacy companies. They have to take their eyes off Tesla as the competitor and focus on competing with ICE. If they can match ICE level with EVs for value of money, then they're still left with a huge battery shortage. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.